Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take the advancements in cryptocurrency and digital assets and try to break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we're going to continue on with our journey through the Cardano ecosystem. And we're going to take a look at Cardstarter. And Cardstarter is a pretty great project uh, for a, a launch pad for all the different projects that are coming in to the Cardano ecosystem. What I like about this is that it is insured. So if we if we look back at all the different products that have come out recently, uh, some have done some rug pulls, some have gotten hacked, and uh, that is never good. So who is out there doing their due diligence uh, to make sure that these products are good? Well, it really was up to the uh, retail investor. Well, now you have a twofer. Uh, so now you have card starters gonna do that with you. And uh, of course, it's always up to you. Now on this channel, this is all about uh, investment opinion, not investment advice. I'm just trying to cover uh, the, as many projects as I possibly can as we roll into the Cardano smart contract, which is gonna come about in August. Right now we're looking at uh, June 11th or June 10th, uh, 2021. So let's just take a look at what card starter is. So first off, uh, insured project accelerator for Cardano. That sounds pretty good. And uh, it's a platform for early adopters because Listen, if you really want to get in on some of these projects and really uh, have a, a pretty good ROI, it's best to get in early and get in often. Will all these projects go to the moon? Absolutely not. Will some? Sure, maybe. Uh, but it's to me personally, uh, what I try to do is just kind of spread uh, all my favoritism around and see like, okay, I like this one, I like that one. And then maybe go for 10 different projects. And uh, if uh, nine of them don't, don't make it, well, they don't make it. But if that one goes to the stratosphere, hey, uh, I got a winner. And uh, that's pretty much all you really have to do. So this is how it all works. So first up, uh, selective listings. All projects launched through our platform, Cardstarter, are subject to diligent vetting as part of our quality assurance program. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the vetting process is, and this is something that we're gonna need to ask uh, Brandon and Owen. They're gonna come in there from the card starter team. And I'm gonna ask them how exactly they do that. Is that just something that they put on the website? Or is that something that actually do a whole vetting process and how stringent is it? Is it how many uh, actual uh, projects come through and how many they actually have to turn away? That will be a good question uh, to ask those guys. There's an insurance fund. Our community backers are insured against the risk of financial loss. We'll get into that in a second. There's a cards accelerator. Successful project applicants gain access to the cards accelerator program, uh, providing them with developmental resources, exactly what it's designed for. And there's tokenless raises. Cardstar allows projects to raise capital prior to having a deployable contract. So here's a thing about getting everything up and going as far as like you are a new project. Uh, it's one thing to make a great product. It's another thing to actually have to worry about the marketing, uh, to worry about all the different funds that are gonna come through and how you're going to actually get revenue for your project. Wouldn't it be great if someone could come along and be like, hey, we have experience with this, let us help you. Well, let us help you uh, pay for these types of uh, things, help you get off the ground. We're also gonna do, you know, kind of like be like a cop and make sure that you're doing the right things and also be an advisor and a marketer. So I think in this situation, this is exactly what Card Starter was designed for, a launch pad. Same thing with like a Polka Starter and those different types of launch pad platforms. This is just for the Cardano blockchain. So, and all the ones that are being built on that. So that's, uh, sound looks pretty good so far. We'll see. And then here's the big thing uh, that I always like to harp on, which is the team. Uh, if you've been on this, this channel or the original channel, Digital Asset News, which is just about uh, the news and what's going on, I'm big into teams because to me personally, a project can sound good and it can sound fantastic on the white paper, but if you don't have the people to actually implement and do something, it's worthless. Uh, ideas are worthless unless you can put them down and make them actually move. Uh, so I'm always saying, if you wanna look at where, where things are going, Look at what the team is, who they are, and what they've done. And one of the things I like about Cardstarter's uh, uh, website is that they don't link you to LinkedIn uh, to go, hey, here's their, here's what they do. And then you go to LinkedIn, it's like just some jagged stuff that isn't really filled in and people just kind of got uh, bits and pieces here or things are missing. What Cardstarter is, they just said, look, let's just put all our information right there. So uh, Atash Amir is the CEO. Uh, Atash discovered early on that he was an efficient developer, created his first proof of work coin in 2013. 2013. Uh, so this guy's been around for a little bit of time. Most of his years were spent under different pseudonyms while heading advisory positions on multiple leading blockchain solutions and uh, growed above 350 million in market cap. So great. So Atash has already been there. Fantastic. Brandon, who we're going to talk to in a little bit when we bring him in here for the interview, 
Uh, he's the COO, the chief operating officer. And he was all about market intelligence, consultancy, uh, enterprise data management, AI, and blockchain sectors. So again, this gentleman's been around for a while, so that's looking pretty good. And then Ashwin is a doctor uh, with his background is in oncology, I believe, yeah, oncology and tumor immunology. So this might be good for to look into data points, I suppose, and see what things are going on. Maybe it helps uh, with a due diligence, which I think is what a part of what Anthony uh, Grosso is doing. He's a, he's, a, he's a crypto trader who's been involved in the crypto space for over half a decade, five years, all right. His role as cards art involves content and coordination and researching various channels for market opportunities to support the uh, ecosystem. Okay, so this is, our, this is our guy who kind of pushes the whole marketing agenda. Great, looks good. And then you got some advisors down here. All right, so not too bad. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, let's keep going and talk about the card system. And this is, this is how it all works. If if you want to get into a project, uh, and again, these guys, they bet the project and go, okay, we're going to do this one. This is the one that you want to look into. Okay, well, how do I get into that? Well, you have to buy what are called cards. And cards essentially gives you, there's, there's two different tiers, really. There's a lottery system. You see like the singles, deuces, and trips. That's a lottery system. That doesn't mean that you're going to get into that project, but they're going to say, hey, if you have 100 cards, which right now, I'll just tell you, it started at 15 cents, these, these cards. And right now the cost is uh, 14.29. So one up uh, quite a bit, uh, but uh, hey, what are you gonna do? So if you got hundred cards, the lottery odds is 10%. They're gonna put all the cards in there. And if, if you say, I wanna get in this ID, okay, we'll put you in. And if you're one of those, you know, one out of 10 chance, you might get it. 500 cards, one out of four, one out of two for trips. But if you got a lot of cards, like 1500, they're gonna say, yeah, you're guaranteed for whatever IDO you wanna sign up for, initial DEX offering. You got a queen, yes. You got a kings, yes. And of course, uh, there's different parts for like the pool weight and liquidity providers and all those things. So, all right, looks pretty good. Hopefully they fix, this seems like, a, honestly, it doesn't seem like a, like a great system. If it's me and I'm like, damn, I only got one out of 10, that means I gotta buy 500 cards or a thousand. Let's, let's say I wanna get a thousand cards for one out of two, which okay. So if I had to do that, that's uh, 14,000 bucks that I got to spend because it's around 1429. Check my math. So that's, eh, we'll talk to Brandon about that. We'll go from there. All right, and then, then here's the crazy enough. Uh, so if you got in early at 15 cents, not a big deal. Now it's a little bit of a big deal, but there's uh, a positive here. So, Subscription model, the insurance treasury. This is this is the interesting an interesting part. Each project that launches through our platform will contribute to our insurance treasury, providing donors in our community a sense of financial protection. So, essentially, what what happens is when you sign up for these cards, they set aside that amount of money, uh, a portion of that, to pay if there's any kind of like a hack or some kind of rug pull. Even though they do their own due diligence and they're they're trying to do the best they can. Hey, nobody's 100%, um, but it's nothing has happened so far. It's all looking pretty good, but I like the whole idea that, hey, you know what? We're 99.9% .9 sure or whatever their you know, statistic is, uh, but we're going to give you more peace of mind with insurance. If, if something happens, here's the insurance aspect of that whole whole part. I like that. That sounds pretty good. Um, auto lock liquidity upon cards that are migration. Auto lock liquidity will be an optional feature for, okay, yeah, sure. And then this was the interesting stuff, the tokenomics. And if you're new to crypto, the big thing you have to watch out for is lockup periods because in a lot of different places, they can have all these, I, I remember the ICO days where people would just dump a bunch of money into these great projects, you know, fantastic white paper, it sounds so good. And then uh, they're like, here, just take my money. And they just, they just dump like their Ethereum on there. And then all of a sudden, like when it launched, it would just dry up and uh, nothing would happen because uh, all the tokens were already given to the founders. They were already given to the developers or they just given to like one or two people and there was no lockup period and they just walked away with all your money. So lockup periods are important. Are, are we talking about weeks, months, or years? So right here, here's the tokenomics. There was a private sale and 20% was taken out of the 10 million uh, supply for card starter. Public sale is 30%, liquidity is 13, ecosystem is seven, partnerships eight, team is 20%. That's kind of high. 
So we're going to have to ask Brandon about that. And advisors are, you know, 2%, sure, whatever. So not too bad. And then here's the round one. He had 2 million cards and 3 million cards. So that means that 5 million cards was already out as far as round one and one, two, round one and two. Uh, 10%, 20, let's see, 2 million cards at 10 cents per token. Wow. Capped at 5,000 per person, so they couldn't really do uh, more. 10% at the uh, token generation event, 22.5% per month for four months. So maybe a four month lockup, it looks like, and round two as well. Four months, all right. And here's the roadmap. Let me just blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. So here, thank you very much, everybody. So April, May, June, this is where we're at. Uh, cards are a token generation event, cards distribution. Quarter three, June, June <laughs> July, August, September. Uh, you're looking at partnerships development and product ideas. And then in the last quarter four, uh, no, uh, October, November, December, they're talking about the great migration because cards right now is built on Ethereum because smart contracts aren't uh, uh, being pushed out with the Alonzo upgrade until uh, August. So they had to do that. But the great migration when they go from ERC-20 to the Cardano network will happen in that time. And that means that all the cards and all the different IDOs that they have will also be migrated onto the Cardano blockchain. So just so you are aware, that is what's happening. Then if you're a, uh, a project, you can apply right there. Good luck with that. And then here's just a, a basic FAQ, uh, current price of cards, how can I buy cards, which I can just tell you right now, uh, Uniswap is the place to go grab them. And uh, you know, if here's, a, here's another trick. Uh, if you're looking at Uniswap uh, and, and you're in America, North America, uh, gas fees plummet around 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So if you want to use Uniswap, uh, wake up around that time, just one day, and you want to pay as many gas fees. That's a little trick I've learned. And then also, and I learned that from uh, the guys over at Charlie, the Oracle and Cardano. So thanks, guys. And then this is the interesting part. How do I stake my cards to participate in the IDOs? We're going to click on this app.card starter. It's going to take you here. So once you have cards and you go onto this web page right here, it's going to uh, connect to your MetaMask wallet. I, uh, you are currently not eligible because I have no cards. I haven't bought any. I should have, but I didn't. So uh, here we are. And you can stake or unstake. But also what's interesting is that you can take a look here and it'll look different if you're on mobile. You know, you have the hamburger menu right there. Or if you're on desktop, it's gonna look something like this. Liquidity projects. Let's take a look at projects. This is the important one we're talking about. Like what IDOs do you want to get into? Well, here's the ones that have already come and gone. So Alpha Impact, Definity, uh, Jira Wallet. This is the one that I missed out on. Not too happy, but uh, hey, that's my, on me. So me and then Charlie. So as you, as you noticed that uh, Access Private, 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 Access Private, Private, the IDO part, and uh, these are already done. So you can see that it is the progress, 100%, 100%. All done, all done, all done. That's a bummer, right? And then here's another bummer. Upcoming IDOs, nothing. So we need to ask Brandon and Owen what's going on and uh, what's the next one that we could potentially get into. I think that's important. But then once you do that, then you come over here to staking. Again, like I said, MetaMask wallet. There's also a part here for liquidity, which I thought was interesting because you can do, uh, Jesus, 40% APR. Wow, watch out. So that is card starter in a nutshell. Uh, and that's how it all works. And I, I will say this, if... Um, I'm interested to see about the tokenomics, the lockup periods, and then what they have going as far as the uh, their due diligence. And also, just as a recommendation, if you're watching this video, it's a pretty good chance you own a little bit of Cardano. And if you do, uh, here's an opportunity. Let me just uh, say this. If you need to stake your Cardano and you're looking for a staking pool, you got a couple options. I actually got many options, but hopefully you can use uh, ours over at DNews. Uh, we are hitting the industry average four to six percent. We use the Microsoft Azure Kubernetes in a, in, in a container, and we are up 99.9% .9 of uptime. If you go to, see this thing spinning above my head, danteachescrypto.com. It's a 100% free website. I made it for everybody. It doesn't matter where they are on the planet. They don't have to pay me a dime. Just go there and learn about crypto. But once you go there, uh, there's going to be a link. It'll say uh, ADA staking. You click on that and this is going to pop up. And it's going to show you exactly the steps of how to stake your Cardano if you need to. What's great about this is that it never leaves your wallet. There is no lockup periods and you can start with just two ADA. It's like nothing. So there is that option. And I walk you through how to do that with uh, the Daedalus wallet, uh, Yoroi and ADA Lite. On top of that, I'd also recommend if you're looking to diversify a little bit, 
He's my man, Hashoshi. He's going to be helping me with this interview. And Hashoshi just started up uh, his uh, staking pool, and it's uh, H4SH. And I will link that in the description below. And as you can see, uh, Hash is just getting started, so he's got just a little less than a million. But uh, he is a developer. He knows exactly what he's doing. So definitely uh, take a look at that one. And if uh, if you want to do both, hey, do both. We're, we're sitting around 30 million or so uh, for both of our pools. But uh, uh, Hash is also a great one. So let's just jump in to this interview and see what these guys uh, have to say. All right. All right, everybody. So welcome. So we just talked about uh, what Card Starter is. I had a couple of questions because, you know, I have a ton of those uh, just roaming around in my in my head. So to help make sense of everything, I brought in a couple of people to help me out. First, uh, to my left or your right, wherever you see this, is, uh, my friend here has Shoshi. He's got a nice little YouTube channel, just passed over 100,000 subscribers. Congratulations, yeah, Ash. Thank you. All thank right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Then we got Brandon. He is the COO of Card Starter. Brandon, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for having me here. And then Owen, we've got here for uh, Hit Up Development, I think it is. And uh, what is your exact title? I forgot to ask, sorry. Uh, project manager. At, at there you go. Yeah. Project manager. <laughs> so we've got uh, a solid team and uh, we're just going to go through just, first of all, the, the questions that I had in the initial video. And then Hash has got some really good uh, developmental questions because he is a developer and, and I am not. So first one is for you, Owen. Uh, tell us about, because the big thing that I, I saw was I always talk about investing in the people. And in the very first part of the website, you talk about you have to do a vetting process. What is that vetting process is? What does it look like? And how many people do you really, you know, actually comes in and you got to actually boot away? But tell me how that works. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, it is a very robust process that we're, we're going through when we're looking at these, these projects that we're um, maybe potentially going to form a partnership with and, and launch through our platform. And, um, you know, we have, we have a very wide ranging uh, group of people on our advisory board, um, people with a lot of experience in, in the industry and, and varied skill sets and really like the, the vision to see like, okay, here's what, here's what a project needs to succeed. And, and this is where the gaps maybe are in some of these ones that are coming forward. And, Maybe there, maybe those are gaps that can be filled, and, yeah. and maybe they're not. And you know, if it's if it's the latter, then you know that's when we have to make the decision. Maybe now isn't the right time to to work with with one of these projects, right? But um, really, the things that we're looking for is, um, you know, we we take a, a a deep dive into the tokenomics, right? We we have a look and and see like, okay, what is your total raise? What are you looking for? Um, what is the intended IDO raise? And do these fall into the formula that we've established that we know works in this space? Um, you know, we look at the people that you have on your cap table. So maybe VCs that, that folks are working with. And, you know, <laughs> we have a, a lot of experience at this point working with various projects and we know um, which VCs are gonna be ones that wanna hold on to your token and, and really believe in the long-term value of your project. Yeah. And then maybe ones that are just looking to turn around and make a quick buck. And those are the people that, you know, we want to be careful about working with because we want to protect the project and we want, you know, we want to um, do everything we can to, to ensure the long-term success of the project and to end everybody that's involved with it. Um, you know, and, and, and outside of that, like we're, we're looking at the team that's involved, right? We're, we're looking at the, the backgrounds of the team and, um, you know, what industries they come from, what they bring to the project, and and if they truly do believe in in what they're they're trying to build. Um, yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> yeah, and, and before you go on, I was going to say this. This is perfect because on this channel, and even in, and also on Hash's channel, we talk about the fundamentals because it's important to take a look at you know who are these people behind it? Have they already done these types of things? Who is backing them? And it seems like these days, especially in the cryptocurrency digital asset market. We got a lot of things that just kind of the fundamentals go out the window. And it's important that you watching the video at home, these is, this is where everything is laid with as far as the groundwork. If you can get to the fundamentals and look at the, the, these products that have actually real world utility and actually do something on top of the things we talk about, it's a better chance that they're gonna be successful as opposed to somebody with this, you know, just a tweet here and a tweet there. So it makes a lot of sense. So real quick, as we're talking about uh, this whole setup, Owen, how many products do you guys get to where you're like, okay, you guys looks good. And how many are, are, do you have to be that, you know, the bad cop 
be like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not going to work out? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good question. You know, it's a, we've got a steady stream of, of projects coming forward, wanting to work with us. And, you know, we, um, we enjoyed some, some very early success with Card Started that got our name out there very quickly. And um, very soon the, the requests started to flood in and, you know, our calendar uh, fills up very quickly these days. Um, and, you know, I, I couldn't tell you an exact number of how many we bring on, how many we turn away, no, um, because it, <laughs> it it has like, uh, you know, it's been so busy this last month is, is it, a lot of um, these meetings kind of blend together. But I can tell you that like we, the ones that we do turn away, like we don't, it, it's not just a, like, you know what, we don't want to work with you too bad. Like, no. you know, we're, we're very um, interested in, you know, helping helping these teams figure out what it is that they need to do to to maybe get to that place where they could come back to us in a few months and and say, okay, we worked on the things that the we worked on filling the gaps that that you guys identified and and wondering now if maybe this might be a better time. Um, you know, that's that's how we want to lead those those calls with with projects that maybe the the fit isn't right in the moment. Um, you know, and, there, and there's lots of there's lots of projects like that where it's just you know the timing might might not be right 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 now, but with so much talent that is on these teams that we've seen come forward to us, you know, like there's a lot of room for for these folks to really pull the pieces together and and get something that is going to be viable in the future. Yeah, makes sense. Like and like what we were talking about before we started, I see you guys as like um, the cop you know, making sure that the things that actually get through are the right ones. You're actually the advisor, like, hey, tweak this and do this. Or like you just said, let's work on a little bit later. And then of course, marketing, because as they come here, you can kind of actually uh, enhance or broadcast these types of uh, projects. So it makes a lot of sense. Okay. So that answers that question. Sounds good. That looks good. Let's talk about, and Brandon, I think this would be more uh, poised to you, the card, the staking requirements, uh, the different system, the singles, the deuces, the trips, and we're talking about between 100 cards and 1,000 cards. What it looks like to me is that this all goes into a lottery. 10% is for the, you know, the singles, 50% for uh, lottery odds for, for the trips, and somewhere in between for the deuces. So talk to us real quick about that, because it sounds like not every project they're going to be able to get into, they're on a lottery system until they move forward into jacks, queens, and kings, which is 1,500 to whatever, 10,000 or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So Jax was our lowest tier that offered guaranteed allocation up until this point. Um, below that, like you say, there was three tiers that offered uh, the chance for them to uh, get into a lottery for the um, possibility of participating in the IDOs. The more that we thought about this and, and the more that uh, you know, we see our uh, community base of, of heart cards holders, you know, the folks that are holding maybe less cards who didn't get in as early, uh, the more we see that grow, the more we think about the the Cardano ethos, um, equity across the board, making sure that people have a chance to participate. And so I thought really heavily about this. Our development team thought really heavily about how can we make sure that um, rather than having 90% of the people in the lowest tier, the singles tier, uh, losing out on the lottery every time, how do we ensure that we can get more people participating in the IDOs? So uh, the last IDO that we launched was the last one that will have that sort of three lottery tiered system with various lottery odds, the higher you go. We're now actually moving to a, a, what is called a wild card bracket. So between 100 cards tokens and 1499 cards tokens, mm -hmm. anywhere within that bracket allows people to participate. Every single card that they add incrementally affects their pool weight or um, what that translates to is, is the size of the allocation that they will get in the IDO they're participating in. But the, the real big thing here is that those folks will now have control of the odds. So as opposed to singles at, at 100 cards only have a 10% chance of getting in, they're able to push their odds all the way up to 100% in proportionate trade-off to the allocation size. And that goes all the way up that entire bracket. Everybody within that range can push themselves up to a 100% chance of being able to participate in the IDO. Some folks may still take those lower odds at a chance at getting a higher allocation and, and therefore potentially a better return. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that there's going to be a ton of folks that are really happy with the ability to go, hey, I just want some skin in the game. Like I just want to be able to participate. Um, so I'm absolutely going to push my slider up to 100%. So 
we're, we're really excited about that. That'll be, that'll be in play by the time the next IDO rolls around. So it's, it's being worked on as we speak. Can you talk about real quick about what the next one may be, might be, or is for the IDO? So we've announced two where the dates have yet to be announced. So we have both Matrix Swap, which is a uh, synthetic uh, leverage trading platform, which is I'm, I'm really excited for. Uh, and then Redoto has been announced as well, which is an online casino gambling platform that actually allows the holders of the token, uh, those who stake, to act as the house. You know, the house always wins, right? Um, so imagine being able to actually provide the liquidity uh, of the house at a casino and being able to uh, generate a return that way. Uh, in addition to being able to utilize the games and play the games, have fun, gamble. A lot of people love that. Um, yeah. And so, you know, uh, a totally tokenized gambling system um, with, uh, you know, built, built on the blockchain. It's pretty exciting stuff. In gotcha. addition to that, there are a couple more projects that are right, ar right about to be announced. And so we're working with all of them to just find the ideal time uh, for them to lock in the date in which they want to execute their IDO, which should again be kind of coming out to the community soon. So those are the ones that are are public to the community right now. Um, yeah, sounds, meaning, yeah, go meaning, ahead. meaning that they're kind of right around the corner for sure. Awesome. Well, that sounds good as far as the gambling part. Uh, my friend Alex Mascioli is going to love that. But uh, uh, for me and Hash, as far as like like YouTube players, uh, we can't cover that. Uh, because YouTube is a big thing about gambling. Getting get in trouble, man. You get in trouble. And I found out the hard way because I talked about an article and they pulled that video. And I was yeah. like, well, never do that again. So, okay, Brandon, thanks so much uh, for that part. So, so walk us through this. Let's say, let's say we are going to uh, get into that. We, we hit the wild cord. We hit a 100%. We're able to invest into that. Let's say we have, you know, however much we have in there. So once we want to go into that ideal, how does that work as far as like, so like, like with the cards? So the, the whole um, IDO participation process is about a five-day time frame for, mm -hmm. for most of the IDOs that we run. Uh, we give folks a three-day registration window. So to qualify or to be eligible for a tier, the first thing somebody has to do is stake the number of cards uh, to be eligible for the tier in which they, they want to be, um, be a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, once that's happened, like the, the wallet obviously connects right to, right to our platform on, yeah. on cardstarter.io, our website. Once they've done that, when a registration window opens for an IDO, they'll typically have three days to be able to register. So as long as they have enough cards staked, they can just go into the platform, click the IDO from the, the pools or the IDO page um, for the IDO that the registrations open on, go into it, uh, connect their wallet again, and just click register, um, complete the transaction on MetaMask, and they're good to go. Once the registration window closes after three days, there's a two day uh, KYC kind of grace period finalization. Um, you know, we let people know that have registered who haven't KYC that they need to finalize that. Most people at this point have, have done their KYC ahead of time. It's a, it's a one-time thing. Um, and then after that, there's a one day IDO window itself where people have a full 24 hours to claim the tokens for which they've registered. So all they need to do is within a day, go in and make their purchase. The, the tokens will be sitting there waiting for them. Um, and the, the reason that we do this is we want to make sure everybody has ample time to participate. Three days to register. Yeah. Hopefully you don't miss that window. One day to claim your purchase. That, that should be enough time for anybody in any time zone to get in and, and make that purchase. Gotcha. Okay. So that, that makes a lot of sense uh, for those type of things. There was, there was one thing about the legal process. Because we talked about in the video about uh, for the KYC process, there's two two different versions. One is a non-accredited investor, and you go through the whole process that way, and an accredited investor. But the thing that I saw that was interesting was that there was like a like a ticket, like a lot, like a something that you would actually hold in place of uh, the actual uh, IDO. So I was thinking to myself, well, if they're holding something as a as a placeholder for that part. Would they have to go through the whole process? Because we know in America we can't be, uh, you know, a part of these ICOs, IDOs because of, uh, you know, different legal ramifications. So, do we still? It sounds like we still have to do that. And you guys are just doing your due diligence, or is there something else with that? Yeah, we're we're going through and doing our due diligence, and the, the KYC side of things is is at the discretion of the projects that are launching through us as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, determining what their compliance and regulatory standards are that they need to follow. Um, the utility or the classification of their token will determine whether or not they they uh, need to 
execute or need to collect KYC for, for participants. Um, so th that's a big thing. Moving forward, there's going to be more integration uh, with the KYC platform, the KYC partners that we're using. Um, whereas if, unless you're KYC'd uh, and verified, if it's a KYC required IDO, people won't be able to register for it. So, it, you know, that'll be sort of a step. It's like, are you KYC'd? Are you staked? Okay, now you can register, right? Sort of the preliminary factors. Yeah, legal process. It's gotta be done. I've been sued before and this mm -hmm. is important to do these things uh, the right way first time. Okay, so the last question I have, I'm gonna turn it over, to, over to Hash, is the lockup period. Because I know we're talking about the private sale, 20%'s out, the team is at 20%, advisors, I forget the, the, the numbers, but talk to us real quick about the lockup periods for each of those sections, if you could. Yeah, absolutely. Team tokens, none of them have been released. Um, the team wants this project to thrive and succeed for the long run. So we don't anticipate that uh, that any of those are going to be, re be released for a while. They're milestone oriented. So um, when Cardano mainnet happens, for instance, that will cause a percentage of the tokens to be uh, unlocked and then entered into a linear vesting schedule over a long period of time. Once uh, a certain number of IDOs have ran through Card Starter, that will cause another percentage to unlock. Once Card Swap, uh, Card Card Starter's um, DEX that, uh, that that is being ideated, um, once there is a one billion dollar TVL on Card Swap, so one one billion dollars, that'll cause another unlock. So again, these are long term goals, right? It's not it's not like hey, two months from now the team tokens are going to start trickling out to us. It's like the long-term, you know, not just months, but years from now vision um, that, uh, that we're getting access to those. Outside of that, um, pre-sale participants, the round one and round two folks who were, were lucky enough to get into the project right from the very get-go. Um, yeah, they've, uh, you know, they, from list price to our all-time high was a, a 598X, right? You know, since then we've started to have some of those Everyone? vested tokens released in a, in a linear fashion, which is, is causing some downwards pressure. Of course, the market sentiment right now is a little interesting too. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're not quite where we were at our all time high. Um, but yeah, percentage of those tokens are being released over a four month period to those folks. Awesome. Okay. So that concludes my basic of basic questions and things that I just like to know. I'm sure there's more. And of course you watching at home, go ahead and put those in, in the comment section. Now I'm going to turn it over to my man, Hashoshi here. And he's got more of the development side questions, which are way more advanced. So Hash, go ahead and take it away. Awesome, man. Thanks. It's like, I, you know, speaking of cops, I'm like the bad cop that's got to come on with like the tech <laughs> questions. They're really annoying ones. No, so I think the, the first place that I want to start, and if I were somebody that, that follows Cardano closely at all, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're coming up on the public test net periods for the Gogan launch. You've got the Alonzo hard fork around the corner where folks are going to be able to actually build these smart contract based applications on the mainnet. And, and for you, like many projects of, of years past, you know, you've, you've taken the route of kind of starting and incubating yourself in, you know, in, in the world of Ethereum and other networks, you know, as you, you really don't have many choices right now, mm -hmm. that being said, what's the path for you to sort of move it in, back into the Cardano ecosystem? What does that look like from a tech perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, luckily, luckily the Ethereum uh, network exists because mm -hmm. it allowed Card Starter to to get a head start um, and allowed the projects that do want to be ready to launch when Cardano mainnet happens. Allowed them to get their preliminary development funds, do do some community bootstrapping, start to get people excited about the project concept ahead of time. Right. You know, without Ethereum existing, we wouldn't have had the uh, the infrastructure to do that. So we're still grateful for Ethereum, but that doesn't mean that we're not sitting at the edge of our seat, excited about what's next with uh, with the Alonzo hard fork and mainnet on, on Cardano going live. Um, like you say, we're, we're at that time of, of testnet, right? And we're speaking with IOHK and the Cardano Foundation on a regular basis. Um, and Cardstarter has this nice advantage of um, being viewed as a, a project that um, you know, it is a sort of a facet and a, and a major supporter of the Cardano ecosystem. You know, being the being the top Cardano launchpad with the most projects running through us, um, we are exposing more projects and actually advising projects who weren't necessarily considering Cardano originally. 
uh, with the advantages of Cardano and, and the smart contract capability. And a lot more people are now taking it very seriously as, as an option for the network and on which they want to build on. Mm -hmm. um, because of that, there's, there's Alonzo Blue, Alonzo White, the, the test nets that are now being made available to the public to really start working on the infrastructure, the, the behind the scenes stuff, um, so they can get everything kind of set up, all of the foundational pieces uh, ready or as close to ready once mainnet actually goes live. Um, so as opposed to you know, us just waiting for, for Cardano um, and, and smart contracts to be live on Cardano and then creating a Cardano oriented launch pad then, um, we're happy that we are able to give you know, not only ourselves, but the projects running through us, this, this head start, right? This ability to get everything set up they need so that they're ready to go once mainnet hits. And, and I think first, well, we all know that first mover advantage is so important in spaces like this and, and to enable projects to have that first mover advantage is incredibly exciting. Absolutely. And so I presume that this means that as, as Gogan comes to mainnet, you've got all systems go for, for decentralized applications to go live. You know, first of all, it's exciting for you as an incubator to see projects that you've been in touch with for a long time now get to bring their ideas to life. But mm -hmm. that also means you're probably going to set up a unidirectional uh, like atomic swap bridge, basically to move things from the ERC20 world to the Cardano world. That's exactly that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, we have an event that uh, we're all looking forward to. It's it's we we call it internally the Great Migration. So once <laughs> once uh, smart contracts go live, like you say, uh, you hit the nail on the head. There, we we are creating a bridge that will allow us to migrate all of our liquidity. All of our community, uh, people will be able to do a one-to-one -to -one token swap for the ERC-20 version of the token to uh, migrate over to the Cardano mainnet. Projects that are incubating through us, um, folks like Charlie, you know, uh, Cardano's decentralized Oracle, uh, Jira Wallet, which is, yeah, I, I, I don't want to get down that um, path because the, the features and functionalities are, are so wild, I'll be yeah. talking about it forever. Um, but folks that are incubated through us, we'll have the ability to use that bridge as well. Um, so the, right. the projects that we're heavily, deeply involved in will be able to take advantage of that bridge. Excellent, excellent. And so I'm just, you know, kind of peeling back the layers here. I, I guess the, the other thing I'm curious about, and this is something that's that's difficult, right? It's difficult to do in all of these ecosystems. And that is when you're going to do the vetting process. And we talked about it when Dan was asking, you know, our man, Dan, AKA Rob is asking questions, how you vet these projects. How do you go about the the tech side, right? At, you know, at a high level, how are you maybe going through that that brass tax level and saying, hey, are the tech foundations here that we believe that someone can execute this grand vision? Um, you know, because that's the toughest part is is execution. Yeah, yeah, you've got a lot of projects that um, that Owen mentioned earlier. The team is incredibly important. What are their mm -hmm. backgrounds? Um, you've got a lot of these projects that are able to build out proof of concept on Solana, right? Like they're they're able yeah. to take the existing languages and infrastructure and build out this proof of concept, and that gets them one step forward to being able to translate it to um, to building out the same concept on on testnet, so it's it's ready to go on Cardano. Mm -hmm. um, so these these folks are all working hard, and it's it's interesting. You know, the the time frame is. Um, it's coming up close, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, August or September when, when smart contracts go live, it seems like a, a ways away, but it, it is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. But with the kind of teams that we're working with who are running 14 hour days and are just used to living that crypto life, like they're able to, they're able to dig deep and, um, and make some amazing things happen within, within that kind of time frame. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's one of those things where I, I know there's some pressure from, you know, crypto communities and, and their favorite layer one chains to, you know, to live in, you know, live in that ecosystem only. But I think it's really good for incubators to be able to see teams executing a POC in another environment. It really is an indicator that they could do the same thing when they get the tools to do so in, in the world of Cardano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so my last question, I want to, oh, and I want to bring you back into the mix here. Um, it would be, you know, from a PM perspective, right? Looking at it from, you know, bringing in projects, helping keep the team in order, right? What is, what I'm really trying to get at is what inspiration can you take from the projects that you're helping to incubate for continuing to innovate 
in within card starter, right? Being able to really take some of those lessons learned and, and bring them into the mix. Um, yeah, you know, like that's one of the advantages that we have of, of being a launch pad is that we get to work with such a wide range of, of people, right? From all over the world, really. And, and people with various backgrounds and various skill sets. And, you know, I have the advantage of kind of having my fingers in so many of these different mm -hmm. projects uh, from the project management standpoint. And, you know, being on calls from day to day with, with different folks. And yeah, you're certainly right. You know, like I, I'm basically looking at, um, to identify like, okay, what, what is making this project succeed so far? Um, and in comparison to somebody else, is there any learnings here that we can apply from, from one to the other? And yeah, just kind of always paying attention to, you know, what are they doing right? Where is there room for improvement? And how can we kind of transfer um, what, what some folks are doing on one project to another? And then maybe uh, also, you know, internally to the card starter team itself. Amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful from a, you know, from a technical perspective as a, you know, a longtime supporter of the crypto space and the blockchain space at large, but also of, of Cardano specifically that, you know, the, the open source foundations of the project kind of, you know, continue to shine through the, this period of time when dApps start to come live. And, you know, there's lots of sharing and innovation and, and you really get that composability where projects are making each other better. Uh, so really good to hear. And uh, Rob, I'm passing it back to you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Perfect. Yeah, great. Uh, guys, thanks again for coming on. These are all great answers. I think it's going to going to help a lot of people to see where things are going. And then as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, there's so many projects coming out. Why don't I just let Cardstarter do all the hard work for me to see which ones are coming and then just go, okay, well, that one looks good. Let me do some more research on that one and then off we go. So that is it for today. But I will just ask uh, the very last one is uh, any last words of wisdom, uh, you three guys, for the people out there in the crypto space? That could be the retail investor. That could be the developer or the project manager's just a real quick snippet. Hash, I'll start with you. Yeah, I, I've been preaching about it for a while now, for a long time. It's just have a plan because I think if you have a plan and you know your path and you know your time horizon and you're not overextended into the market, sh the short-term game, the, the the bad news, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, the you know delays to the timelines about projects that you you know you're, you're following, those things hurt less they might be frustrating but they don't keep you up at night so yeah. if you have that plan you're going to rest easy at night and you're going to be able to ride this you know this train to the the promised land right of of mass adoption that's right perfect Brandon, what do you got yeah that actually segues uh really well in, into one of the things that i've been speaking about a lot recently and that's to widen widen your scope um we see a lot of folks really worried about the day-to-day um, you know, if an IDO only does 10 X on launch, as opposed to going 50 or hundred X, because that's what, uh, they became accustomed to, um, mm -hmm. during, during the golden, golden days, um, you know, just, just widen your scope a little bit. You're, you're getting involved in projects because you true, you, tr or you, hopefully you're getting involved in projects because you truly believe in the fundamentals of the project, the utility of the project, it's long-term vision. Um, so if that still rings true. Uh, if you widen your scope to weeks away or months away, and then ultimately years away, because we're so far away from, from uh, hash, like you mentioned, that, that mass adoption piece, there's, there's a lot of headroom, a lot of, uh, a lot of room for further developments and, and additional utility in the space. So don't get worried about the, the one minute candles or, or the pain on the day-to-day -day basis. Th think, about, think about what you're working towards in the long run. Perfect. Nice. I like that one, uh, especially fundamentals. And then lastly, card starters, top cop. Owen, what do you got for, for words of wisdom? Um, yeah, you know, I would, I would really just echo a lot of what these guys said. And, and overall, just, you know, stay optimistic. You know, I, I know it's hard sometimes and it's hard in, in, in these current market conditions as well. It's, it, you know, it's easy to get caught up in that, in that stress and that um, negativity but you know, it, it's what I try to integrate into my day to day as much as possible is, is staying optimistic and, you know, keeping my eyes and, and my concentration on, you know, the good things that are coming uh, down the pipe. Right. And, and, you know, Cardano is something that we're all looking forward to here. Uh, Ada may not going live. Yeah. And we're, I, I really believe we're going to see some exciting stuff happen once we, once we get there in, in the coming months. Oh, I'm pretty sure. All right. So that's it for today. If you found value in that video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. 
gentlemen, thanks so much for coming on. And uh, for you out there, we'll see you in the next one. All right. So I hope that helped. Uh, again, you know, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to this channel. We only go over more advanced things and new types of products that are coming out in the crypto and digital asset space. And lastly, uh, take a look at my friend Hashoshi's uh, staking pool. Also for uh, the DNews stake pool and uh, danteacherscrypto.com. Just go there 100% free. There's videos, there's instructions. Uh, we're very open as a book. You can take a look at uh, just our different saturation levels and, and how we compare to other uh, stake pool. So, so that is it. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And, uh, I'll see you on the next one.